Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, podcast number 48 on Hollow Earth Radio. I want to talk about truth seeking. I'd like to think that I am a truth seeker. And recently we had the anniversary of the 9 11 horrible, violent thing that happened in New York City when three towers came down and were flattened. I'm one of those people that believes that it was a planned demo and that explosives were used to take the three towers down. And when I say three towers, I mean there were two towers at 9 something a.m. that were both hit by airplanes and had various different levels of fire damage on different floors way up high. And then there was a third tower, World Trade Center Tower number seven, which came down at 5.20 p.m. approximately, several, several hours after the first two towers fell. And all three towers came down completely symmetrically at the same rate of speed, and all three towers had a totally different level of damage. And perhaps it doesn't matter if explosives were used or if we know the truth about explosives or not, because what happened happened. People died, people were traumatized, people breathed the toxic air after they were told the air was safe to breathe, which was obviously a lie. Many people have lung problems because of that. Many people are fighting insurance companies to get the medical benefits that they deserve because they were injured by the toxic air from 9-11. A lot of people in my life actually don't agree with me on this about 9-11 being a planned demo. I'm not saying that airplanes weren't actually flown into the towers, although I do think that (laughs) it's pretty unbelievable to me that the supposed hijackers were the ones that could actually control the planes enough. Even pilots have said that it's pretty hard to, especially if you're not an experienced professional airline jet pilot, to fly huge massive jets into buildings like that. Plus the the um, U.S. military usually sends fighter jets to stop hijacked planes and they of course didn't do that because it supposedly they thought it was a training drill and they were told to stand down which in itself is another strange thing. The strangest thing is that there are very intelligent people. I know somebody who's a physics professor and he actually believes the mainstream story. And I know somebody else who is an architect and she actually believes the mainstream story that it was just fires that created this totally bizarre, never in the history of mankind has it ever happened, that a steel framed building would collapse completely 100% symmetrically, perfectly evenly in the same day. It just, it doesn't, from a physics standpoint, does not make sense to me. And I know there are like 1400 or 1200 um, architects and engineers who do believe that explosives were used. And coincidentally, pretend in your mind that you do think explosives were used. If we tried as human beings to recreate that horrible event on that day, and we put explosives, thermite, thermite and thermate, whatever the names of the different military type demo uh, building explosives, if humans actually installed those properly, professionally into the three towers, and push the button, they would coincidentally fall and look pretty much like what we just saw, coincidentally. So (laughs) that's kind of funny. So whatever, it doesn't really matter if explosives were used or not. What bothers me because the people that died, died. And that's, it was a horrible, frightening, terrifying day. And it was used as a justification for all kinds of different war, violent war things that the United States did in Afghanistan and Iraq, which is horrible. I'm not a fan of war. I'm not a fan of, of saying, well, because of this, now we have to bomb these people because it doesn't really solve the problem. If, 
If violence is done, and then more violence is done, then more violence is done, and then more violence is done, and then it's us versus them, and it's duality. <sighs> what boggles my mind is that there are a lot of highly intelligent people who believe the mainstream story of 9-11, and I just am not one of those people. I just don't believe, and I do support in the idea of people freely questioning and thinking about these stories that we are told I had somebody, somebody online was saying that they think if you believe that 9-11 was done with explosives, and I didn't say inside job, I just said explosives, because I don't know who did it, and how they figured out, or who cooperated with who, I just think explosives were used, and it's very strange that they didn't test for explosives, they found no evidence of explosives, because they didn't test for explosives, that's kind of like saying, if you think somebody has died of alcohol poisoning, but you don't test their bloodstream for alcohol, then you'll say, we didn't find any evidence of alcohol in the bloodstream of this person, but that's because they didn't test for any bloodstream alcohol. So if you have a crime scene where three humongous towers fall down and you don't test for explosives to see if whoever did this used explosives to help create the goal that they had of flattening three towers, you're not going to find explosives. You know, if you don't look for, if you think somebody was murdered with a certain weapon, but you don't search for that weapon, then you're not going to find that weapon. So the fact that they didn't even test for explosives is very strange. Somebody told them whoever was in charge, and just like the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, was told that they had to regurgitate what the Bush administration's, what was it, they hired a consulting firm, instead of allowing the Environmental Protection Agency to test the air and tell the public if it was safe or not, they had to just regurgitate what a firm said that the Bush administration hired. And so they just regurgitated, the air is safe to breathe, everyone, don't worry. So the air is safe to breathe, even though the air was not safe to breathe. Just like when they slaughter animals and they say that it's humane, it's not necessarily humane. Just like I've heard that free range chicken, I recently actually am starting to go vegan again because when I was a teenager I I really love animals and I and I'm kind of a health food nut and so I used to be vegetarian and then I was vegan after I visited some dairy farms in my early 20s I didn't like what I saw in supposedly small dairy farms let alone large dairy farms which would be even worse and I think that as humans we get overwhelmed and we have denial mechanisms. And so I'm thinking intelligent people who believe the mainstream 9-11 story, I think they have a psychological block. There are people who think, people like me, who believe that explosives were used to take the towers down on 9-11. They think that that means I, I believe that Elvis is still alive and that I believe, you know, every conspiracy theory that there is, that the chemtrails, you know, I don't even know about chemtrails. I think there might be something to chemtrails, but I don't know. But I will not just blindly go along with whatever the mainstream story is. And I will also not blindly go along with alternative theories about Sasquatch, about Elvis, about... Um, Kurt Cobain was murdered. I don't think he probably was, but I will acknowledge he probably did commit suicide as it seemed that he did. Uh, but I will say that if someone has suicidal tendencies and they are known to have these kinds of issues, if somebody was to murder them for a financial gain, it would be easy to cover that up probably because if the person actually was suicidal in real life and had uh, mood swings and depression and various personal issues psychologically and were tormented in some mental way then if they were murdered to make it look like a suicide you can pretty much get away with it probably so who knows but i'm pretty sure that he did commit suicide i think marilyn monroe probably committed suicide but then again some people say maybe not because she knew certain things with JFK and all of that and they didn't want her to know that stuff but who knows she had definitely had some uh, emotional challenges and was depressed and 
apparently drank a lot of alcohol at times and took barbiturates. So who knows? She probably committed suicide, but I don't know for sure. The same thing with Martin Luther King, whoever they said actually killed him. Maybe that person really did kill Martin Luther King, but the reason why might be different than what they're telling us. The bottom line is, I think that humans have some psychological blocks sometimes to knowing certain things. If something is really disturbing, you can block it out and just go, no, it's what they said. It's just what they said. Because they said it on Nova, it must be that those three towers, I don't even know if they mention World Trade Center Tower Number 7, which fell at about 5.20 p.m., which was a really small tower, much shorter than the other huge towers that fell. I don't know if they even talk about that on the Nova special. My dad actually believes in the mainstream 9-11 story because he thinks it's, it's pretty strange that those three towers collapsed the way they did, perfectly symmetrically at the same rate of speed, even though they all three had different levels of damage. He does acknowledge that that's pretty weird and it's like a freak occurrence, but he thinks because on Nova, he thought, well, Nova would never lie. And he's like, well, you know, if something like that, if explosives were used, they would never be able to keep it a secret, which I don't agree with. I think there are psychological blocks that people have to acknowledging this, just like when you eat meat. That's what I was going to say about meat. The only way that I can eat meat and dairy products, because I do like the taste of ice cream, cheese, especially from France, and I like eggs, especially if they're from a small farm, actually, they taste better. And if I know the chickens are happy, actually, I don't have a problem with eating eggs if they're from a very small farm where I know that the chickens are running around and they get to just be normal chickens and they're happy. But generally, the only way that I can eat meat and dairy products is if I pretend that they're just living on a farm and then they just get, you know, slaughtered one day humanely. You know, like probably like how they used to do it in the 1800s when we didn't have such a huge population of people that wanted meat and dairy products. I also think that for my health, it's, it's not really that healthy for me to eat meat and dairy. But the point of what I'm saying is the whole 9-11 story and wondering what the truth is about that is, is similar to the idea that if you eat meat and dairy, you kind of have to deny and pretend certain things. And so I think as humans, some of us want to know the truth of things and acknowledge and face the truth, even if it's frightening and painful and uncomfortable. And then others of us would rather just go along with whatever the main story is about whether it's okay to eat dairy products and meat and just pretend like everything is fine and you know the animals are humanely treated or maybe some humans don't even care they just think well I'm a human and I can eat whatever I want therefore the animals are you know they're for us to consume they're not really you know cows and chickens and goats and pigs are just here to serve humans which I think is sad which I would call speciesism so the truth about 9-11 to me lines up with my also climate change. <laughs> Sorry, I'm rambling. Somebody said that they thought because I believe that 9-11 is partly a lie in terms of explosives being used, I think explosives were used. And I didn't say that's an inside job. I just said I think explosives were used and that it wasn't really investigated, which is very fishy in itself. I don't know who did it or how they did it and how they... You know, obviously people financially gained from 9-11. There's all kinds of financial things that happened that were very strange because of that and all the war stuff that was justified, which I don't believe was justified anyway. Even if 9-11, even if the mainstream story of 9-11 was true, which I don't believe it is, I still don't, I still am not a... Uh, I wouldn't give the yes vote to invade Afghanistan and bomb Afghanistan to invade Iraq and do all the violent things that the United States did in Iraq. That's just nasty. So I'm not a big war fan at all. The us versus them mentality, I think, is barbaric. My, my, my point is the truth. The truth versus denial. So... I think explosives were used and it makes no sense to me and boggles my mind why people can watch that and just think, oh yes, those three towers just fell perfectly symmetrically. 
just because of some freaky like domino effect of the steel being melted i mean it would it would fall crooked in in my mind it would fall all three towers would have fallen asymmetrically probably bent over to the side they wouldn't have just flattened into powder so it's just absurd but that's just what i feel but also i wanted to talk about nutrition and I'm going back into a vegan direction, although I watched a, a documentary last night about veganism and how you can call yourself a vegan and you can eat lots and lots of junk food as long as it doesn't have, you know, you can eat margarine and like cookies that are made with sugar and flour and vegetable oil and it's not healthy for you. And then you can drink soda with corn syrup but it doesn't have any dairy or meat, so it's vegan. So that's like eating a processed food. You, know, you can eat potato chips and french fries all day and say, I'm a vegan. I eat potato chips and french fries and vegetable oil <laughs> and cookies and sugar and corn syrup. And, you know, that's not healthy, although it's not animal products. So this guy was a doctor in pointing out that to call yourself vegan doesn't necessarily mean you're eating healthy food. You could also eat like fake um, like things made out of soy products or nut products that are supposedly like fake cheese and fake meat and basically processed foods that are in packages that are made with guar gum and uh, soy lecithin and you know different vegetable oils and different ingredients that they try to mimic meat and cheese with and so that's just a lot of vegan processed food, which isn't necessarily healthy for you. But the kind of, of eating that I'm talking about is a plant-based whole food nutrition plan, which would be to eat things made by nature, which would be potatoes that are whole, not deep fat fried, and not with a bunch of weird like salt and sugar and preservatives added to them. So that would be eating actual vegetables made by Mother Earth. And so that would be mostly organic. It would be plants, plant-based whole foods, which would be go to the grocery store and go to the produce section and actually buy things that are in their natural form, preferably organic with no pesticides. And those would be fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds that are not in packages and they're actually natural the way they came out of the ground from the earth and then you would mostly eat that so that's basically what I'm doing in terms of my health in terms of the welfare of plants of plants and animals of animals and as well as environmental impact of meat because to produce meat and dairy you need a lot of water and a lot of land and there's a lot of methane gas produced etc. I've seen a, a few different documentaries on the fact that climate change is hugely impacted by the meat and dairy industry, but they don't want to talk about that because there's a, it's a big business and there's a lot of money to be made on meat and dairy. And also human beings, we're addicted to meat and dairy. I mean, I, I miss ice cream. I love ice cream. I like steak. I love the taste of steak. You know, I'm, I think I am addicted to meat and dairy. Uh, so that's another way of, den of being in denial is to pretend like, oh, but we like it so much. It must be okay. So let's just keep doing it. So there's a sort of denial and there's also the financial aspect. And one of the documentaries I saw also talked about how the Cancer Association and the heart disease and the diabetes all three of those organizations are partly sponsored by companies who manufacture meat and dairy and so it's in their best interest to tell people that it's safe to eat meat and dairy and the statistics supposedly reflect that if you're on a plant-based diet and you don't eat meat and dairy you have a much less of a chance of developing cancer diabetes and heart disease, as well as there are more naturopathic type doctors who put their patients that have cancer, diabetes, and heart disease on a plant-based diet, and they either reverse their diseases or they greatly improve their health. 
and need a lot less medication and sometimes people are taken off medication. So the power of nutrition is another truth. I'm interested in being awake to the fact that I think 9-11 was done with explosives by somebody, I don't know who, but I know there's financial gain to be had from that. I also feel like the truth about eating is for in terms of the environment, animal welfare, and my own personal body health is to eat a plant-based diet and that it's kind of a form of denial to pretend like eating lots of dairy and meat is good for me. I don't think that's true. I think that I would be the healthiest possible person if I mostly eat a plant-based whole food diet. And then the third thing I wanted to talk about in terms of truth is Aaron Joel Mitchell. He is the 41 year old man who was at Burning Man in this year of 2017. It was his first time attending Burning Man and apparently he was an American citizen from Oklahoma and he was living in Switzerland with his wife who he met I guess on a trip in Nepal. This is what I read and they fell in love and got married. And so he was an American living in Switzerland with his Swiss wife at the time of his death. He went to Burning Man for the first time. And for whatever reason, he chose to run into the fire at Burning Man that was 50 feet tall towards the end of the festival. I've been to Burning Man once and I, I was like a few hundred feet away from the 50 foot tall man burning and I was kind of shocked at how hot it was even standing really far away my skin got really red just from being like a few hundred feet away from it so to see somebody running that close and actually running into the fire and then he later died of his of his wounds because he got severely burned there are a lot of people online that are saying very mean judgmental things about what he did about how it was selfish and he's just trying to create you know uh, make himself famous and get all this attention and it's like my response is that I would like to know what the truth is because about was he intending to end his life or my my theory is that because I've watched the video several times of him running into the fire it's a very short video and he runs really fast and he runs a past these two security people that are dressed in in fireproof suits and they're you know trained to try to stop people from harming themselves by getting too close to the fire and they tried to catch him but he ran too fast and I watched the video and he has a water bottle kind of around his body you can kind of see the silhouette you know a professional photographer took a really beautiful photo very sad what it actually is of but the, you know I'm a figure model and so I'm always noticing the, sh the shapes of people's bodies and their skeleton and the anatomy of a human and it's a beautiful photo of his silhouette while it's running and then there's the fire in the background and so if you didn't know that he was you know gonna die you would think oh what a beautiful photo of a man running you know in front of a fire at a festival but the reality is, is that soon after that photo was taken on the video, you can see that he turns a corner really fast and he falls and he trips and falls into the fire. And the security people try to grab him, but then some debris falls right at the moment that they tried to grab him and they had to wait because they might have died themselves if they had just grabbed him right then and there. Uh, and who knows if he would have survived because he was probably already burned so badly even just from a few f seconds of being in that fire. In my opinion, it looked to me like he was euphoric and he was running and maybe he was trying to be a daredevil and thought that he could break the rules and run through the fire and come out the other side. Because I think that the Burning Man sculpture this year was this um, interesting structure that you could walk underneath and obviously when it was lit on fire you couldn't do that anymore but I think in his mind he might have been thinking I'm just gonna run through it you know I'll be the only person that's ever done it and survives and he was wrong because he didn't survive 
but it could be that he decided I'm out of here I'm leaving but I have a hard time believing that somebody that does that knows for sure if they're going to die I mean chances are you think yeah I'm not going to survive this I don't know and they tested his blood for alcohol and they didn't find any and now they're waiting to see if there's some other drug in his bloodstream that would cause him to make such a choice but there's all these people online that are just assuming that he definitely wanted to kill himself and end his life and they're just making assumptions and it's true maybe he did decide to end his life his family apparently he had no kids but he had a wife and he had his parents and his parents said he seemed in good spirits he was a health food nut he was very physically active was into hiking and running and eating really healthy organic food all the time there's pictures of him you can see online his name is Aaron Joel Mitchell he's a very handsome fit looking guy you know he looks like a health food vegetarian organic you know eating kind of person very fit he looks kind he looks sensitive I know you can't tell from a photo what somebody is like but my overall intuitive impression of him was that he was a thoughtful sensitive kind human being maybe he was you know really adventurous and some of his family or friend members online said that he was kind of a prankster and a trickster and used to and used to like to surprise people and show up unannounced and so it could be that he took something that altered his brain chemistry a bit which you know made him feel euphoric and maybe it altered his perception of the safety of what he was doing I mean my theory is that he got into a euphoric state whether it was because of uh, drugs that he took that altered him or if he was in his own natural high state because I myself don't even take drugs and yet I get kind of in altered states of mind just from my own natural state of mind uh, although at Burning Man I would never try to run into the fire uh, but if I was more of a daredevil type person maybe I would no probably not but I'm just wondering the truth so the truth about 9-11 the truth about eating dairy and meat products as well as the truth about what the Burning Man guy's intention was when he ran into that fire so I watched the video several times even though it was upsetting to see I like to see the reality of that so he ran into the fire and it to me it looked like he was just wanting to run through it and sort of be a trickster and sort of break the rules and rebel not necessarily that he was angry and upset and was like screw you guys I'm out of here so who knows maybe he did want to just go bye bye but I don't think so but what bothers me is that there's all these people online gossiping about it and saying oh he was so selfish oh he's just trying to get attention he wanted to be famous you know there's nothing wrong with wanting to become famous and get attention by the way but the way people talk about people who commit suicide I mean personally I've thought about suicide a lot uh, since I was 15 years old I've never attempted it and nor do I ever hope that I ever do I always realize that it's not the best choice and that I don't really want to traumatize my family or my friends I don't want to uh, jeopardize my job I have a great job as an art model at a bunch of different art schools and I have a nice apartment and a cat and I have parents who love me and I have a boyfriend so I always realize the reality that I don't want to uh, I don't really want to end my life but there's times when I wish I could escape and that I feel like um, I don't know how to change my life the way it is now because I'm afraid of change and so I think well then to heck with it I'm just out of here but I've never acted upon that but the reason why I'm telling you that is I'm feeling fine right now the reason why and I'm seeing a therapist and I have support so don't worry I'm not trying to freak anybody out by talking about this but there is a stigma attached to talking about these you know uh, suicide and I feel sad that a lot of people judge other people when they commit suicide and I feel like that's part of why people don't like to talk about when they feel suicidal because they don't want people to get mad at them and shame them or say oh you're just trying to get attention you want me to feel sorry for you blah 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 you know it could be that when someone attempts suicide they're just crying out for help and they're hoping that they don't succeed and then sometimes maybe people really do just want to end their lives and say bye-bye so 
on, on one level, I think that it is everyone's right and choice to leave if they want to leave. But then this other part of me is like, no, I think it's best to try to save people that are trying to do that and try to help them find a way to make peace with being here on this planet and figure out, you know, what they what they love about being alive and try to find that if they've lost touch with that. But I don't feel that judgmental towards people who end their lives because I feel like I feel sad. I feel empathy and compassion. If someone is in so much pain physically or mentally that they want to just leave the planet, it's really sad to me and it's upsetting. And yes, it's sad for the person's family and friends and it's sad for the, you know, the guy at Burning Man. It's sad for the fire rescue people who wanted to, to not let him run into the fire like that and they failed to, to save him. And it's sad mostly for his family and friends, his wife, his parents, anybody at Burning Man who witnessed that, who is traumatized by it. That's all very sad. It's also sad that he himself, Aaron Joel Mitchell, ended his life, whether he meant to or not he was severely burned and didn't survive. I mean, I imagine he suffered some pain doing that. I don't know what happens when you run into a fire like that. Do you, you probably immediately go unconscious? I don't know. Or did he scream in pain, you know, before he went unconscious and, and then his eventually his heart stopped and his brain flatlined? I mean, that's the reality. So I'm sorry if anything I'm saying is upsetting anybody listening. I don't even know if people are listening. If you're listening to my podcast, thank you so much. This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, podcast number 48 on Hollow Earth Radio Seattle. I just wanted to talk about truth and denial. And as it relates to the guy who ended his life at Burning Man, whether it was intentional or not, I don't know. I just wish people wouldn't gossip about it and make assumptions. I think that we don't really know his intention. We know the result of what he did, but we don't know if his intention was to run through the fire and be some kind of daredevil who broke the rules and was the first person in history to run through the fire at Burning Man and survive. Or if he really was just like, I'm out of here. Goodbye, everybody. Um, and then the same thing, 9-11, I think explosives were used, and I think it's my right to uh, question the story. It's, you know, everybody's right to question whatever the mainstream story is versus the conspiracy theory, supposedly. Also, climate change. I think climate change is real. Just because I don't believe the 9-11 the, the mainstream story doesn't mean that I don't believe in climate change. I do believe in climate change. I do believe in evolution. Uh, I think Elvis is truly not alive anymore. I think Kurt Cobain probably committed suicide. I think Marilyn Monroe probably committed suicide. You know, I think JFK and Martin Luther King, I think that there's some things about their, their assassinations that are a little bit like, could be some cover-ups going on there in terms of the military industrial complex, in terms of people being very upset with their anti-war stance, their anti-poverty stance, uh, some of their ethics, which I admire. The Martin Luther King speech beyond Vietnam was like my favorite speech I've ever heard in my entire life. When he talks about humanity and poverty and economic injustice and how that is definitely a problem right along with racism. There's racism, classism, sexism, speciesism, there's poverty, and there's war, and there's the military industrial complex, and Martin Luther King pretty much brought up all of those subjects. It was about civil rights and racism, but it was also about poverty and economic injustice, and he talked about communism and the Viet Cong and how Maybe it's not really the right answer to think that we could dominate communists and make them all be capitalists. I mean, what is the difference between, you know, if communists want to take over the world versus capitalists want to take over the world? I mean, it's still the same kind of one, one kind of person wanting to dominate another kind of person. So it's the us versus them mentality. So he was bringing that up in, in that speech beyond Vietnam. Hey, check this out. Now that we're on the topic of conspiracy theories and truth versus denial, 
Did you remember on 9-11-2001, I was art modeling at an art school, and I remember when 9-11 first happened, uh, my first thought was that it was absurd and that it was hard to believe that it was really happening. And then I remember that the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, told people the air is safe to breathe. And then later on, it came out that the EPA was told that they had to regurgitate what the Bush had, what the, okay, what the company that the Bush administration had hired to survey the air because they would not let the Environmental Protection Agency test the air. Instead, they had to just regurgitate what the Bush people told them to say, which was the air is non-toxic and safe to breathe, which we all know is a lie. Many, many, many people who helped clean up the, the mess after 9-11 and all the dust debris, firefighters and rescuers and healthcare workers and just good Samaritans that were there to help inhaled a lot of that debris and ended up getting various lung issues, whether it's uh, lung cancer or asthma or various problems with their lungs and various infections. Some of these people I know have died. Some of these people to this day are fighting to get their health insurance to cover their huge medical bills. And they're telling them, well, there's no proof that it has anything to do with 9-11. And you can't prove that. Just like the tobacco industry said for a long time that you can't prove that smoking cigarettes can give you lung cancer. Just like the sugar uh, corporation paid to have it known that sugar wasn't that bad and that fat was really what was bad for you and not sugar. So there are multinational corporations that it's in their best interest to tell us something because they want to make a profit, not because they want to tell us the truth. So it's weird to me how many people think that it's not plausible that 9-11 was done as a planned demo. And now I wrote a poem about it in 2012 when I was finishing my BA degree in Seattle at Antioch University. This is my poem on 9-11. It's called Ice Gonna Break, Heil USA Incorporated. Close your eyes because we're going to the land of Alice. Open your mind because we're going to the land of malice. Close your thighs, because we're going to the land of fallacy. Fail to see hypocrisy, pseudo-democracy. Crush to powder, lights, camera, action. Demons at sea, lights, hypocrisy. Pancakes laughing all the way to the bank. Retrofitting, are you kidding? Evacuate and see, scapegoating powers that be. Vaporizing lies to molten steel, melting remotely controlling jet black light. Imperial power stealing off that scraper of sky. Confess healing heroes deserving zero. Fears igniting justify. Snakes coiled up, oil spoiled, gold plated. All you can eat pancake feast. The least of our concerns, national security. The most of our concerns, wealthiest real to me. Reality bends the way we want. You're either with us or them. Bleh! Just us thrusting into thermite land, planned pretend, appears to me to be the new Hiroshima, Vietnam, asbestos dust, trust us, must go to shock and awe, must go to shock and awe, Heil USA, Heil USA, Heil USA Incorporated, war mongers, oil lusters, longing, imperial power, don't forget the third tower, also crushed to powder. In perfect symmetry, molted, melted steel, sealing scapegoats fate, Bleh. steel lava flowing, stealing freedom away, giant pile of denial, praying mantis eating its own mate, conspiracy theory 
dear to me, clear to me, mainstream theory, big brain wash, real terror comes for those who think their shit don't stink. Fear of scarcity, scare of fiercity, in our fair city, they obey no law. Someday their heart may thaw. So that's a poem that written by Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, about 9-11. And that's how I feel about it, even to this day. And my other topic I wanted to talk about is nutrition. I am kind of a nutrition nerd. I have always had an interest in healthy eating. And thankfully, I was raised by two parents. They divorced when I was four. But I always was taught about nutrition and I was never taught that it was healthy to eat candy and junk food and both of my parents separately in their own way would make me eat salad and encourage me. Thankfully as a kid I liked spinach and lima beans and broccoli. Uh, I never liked cooked carrots, so I would throw those away or hide them and not eat them. But I liked raw carrots, and to this day it's true. I don't like cooked carrots. I love raw carrots. But I am kind of like one of my pet peeves about humanity is that in medical school, unless you're a naturopath or you minor in nutrition, you are not taught hardly anything about nutrition and the effects of food on the health of the body in terms of what it does to the immune system. There are many naturopathic doctors as well as nutritionists and doctors who have taken it upon themselves to learn about nutrition even though they weren't required to to get their medical degree in order to help their patients not need as much medication and surgery. There's nothing wrong with medication and surgery uh, per se because it does save a lot of people's lives sometimes to have those things available. But I would say that it's also important to eat healthy and exercise in order to maximize how well your immune system functions in terms of your blood sugar, your blood pressure, the health of your arteries, you know, so t to me, nutrition and exercise should be a definite part of somebody's medical school uh, program. And I know that the same is true for veterinary doctors who study to take care of dogs and cats and people's pets. Uh, there's a doctor who I respect a lot named Dr. Karen Becker. She is a veterinary medicine specialist and she also is like a naturopathic vet for cats and dogs and I think she knows about rabbits and horses and other animals as well in terms of nutrition and my cat actually I switched him to a raw meat diet and his health has improved tremendously the vet I was taking him to thought he might be diabetic and I got him a blood test and apparently his liver and kidneys were okay. He was drinking a lot of water, so I was worried that he was dehydrated. But to make a long story short, I took him off the food. I thought I was giving him healthy food. Uh, I was giving him grain-free, organic, all-natural, uh, wet food and dry food from the natural, healthy pet food store. And it was definitely gluten-free and grain-free, but it had potato starch in it and, and rice flour and other kinds of carbohydrates, which is not good for his blood sugar. So what I did was, and it also the dry food was dehydrating him. He was drinking massive amounts of water and peeing a whole lot. And the doctor said his, his kidneys were fine, but I have a feeling that they would have gotten bad later if I had kept feeding him that way. Thankfully, my cat was willing to switch cold turkey. A lot of cats are very picky, and if you try to switch a cat or a dog to raw meat diet, uh, cold turkey, they sometimes will not eat it. They'll like, what's this? They'll sniff it and look at you like, well, that's not food. What is that? Because they don't, they're not used to it. So my cat immediately like e ate it, and he looked at me like, oh, wow, where's this been all my life? And so he immediately switched 
I know somebody else whose cat will not eat that and he sort of gave up on feeding his cat that. We tried to mix it in gradually, but the cat wouldn't go for it. Another friend of mine, I told him when his cat wouldn't eat the raw meat, I said, well, maybe if you just take away all of her old food and only give her the new food, eventually she'll get so hungry that she'll just eat it. And that's what happened. To make a long story short, my friend's cat now eats the raw meat food and doesn't eat the old food that they used to give her and her health is improved. My cat, I test his blood sugar and it's fine and it's normal. And so he is not diabetic and I don't have him on any medications. A lot of people, uh, animals and people, when they improve their nutrition, they maximize whatever the potential of their immune system is. You also need to work on your exercise, your sleep, your relationships. You know, if you're having positive relationships, if you're exercising and sleeping enough and drinking enough water, as well as eating, proper foods for your body, then whatever the potential of your immune system is, is possible. And then see if you still need surgery and or medication. That's what I believe. So I wish if I was king of the world, I would make it so that people that went to medical school would have to learn a lot about nutrition and preventative medicine, not just treating diseases with surgery and drugs, but also because I know there's a lot of money to be made in that. And I know that most doctors really just want to help their patients. I also know that pharmaceutical corporations want to make a profit. And I also know that surgery, you know, our medical industry is a for-profit company. So that's the dark side of medicine. But the good side of medicine is that doctors and nurses and veterinary doctors want to take care of their patients, whether it's a dog, a cat, or a human, they all want to take good care and help the people heal. So I I strongly believe in preventative medicine right along with actively having a healthy eating and exercise plan so that your immune system can be the best that it can be and then see if you still need surgery and drugs. You know, a lot of people don't actually need surgery and and medication and they go off of it. I actually was on thyroid medication for a while because they told me I had low active thyroid and I stopped eating wheat because a naturopath told me, because I kind of knew I was addicted to bread. I just kind of had a feeling like I really can't go a day without eating bread and I love bread like olive bread and rosemary toast and I used to put butter on it eat it every day I'd eat eat it with avocado because I thought well that's healthy but it's true avocado is healthy but I was eating too much bread and it was making my blood sugar go up and down and I ended up going off of wheat cold turkey they had me on medication for low active thyroid and to make a long story short six months after I went off of all gluten and wheat and bread products my thyroid didn't need medication anymore. And so they said, oh, we're over treating you now. You need to go off this medication. We don't wanna over treat you. And I've had my thyroid tested twice since then and each time it's been in the normal healthy range. So I'm really happy to say that. And now I am stopping uh, meat and dairy products and trying to not eat any processed food every once in a while I have like a slurpee like a sugar-free slurpee which I know is not good for me full of artificial colors artificial flavors artificial sweetener etc I generally don't eat that kind of stuff just every once in a while and I still eat chocolate and I eat instead of real ice cream made from cow milk I'm trying to just eat the coconut milk ice cream when I want a treat and I still eat dark chocolate But basically, nutrition is is something that I really care about. And it really bothers me that medical school for vets and human doctors doesn't really teach a lot about nutrition. Because to me, like the whole body, the health of the body is about chemistry. And chemistry can be altered by drugs and medication. And chemistry is also altered by everything that you put in your mouth. Everything that you eat and drink affects your body's chemistry. So therefore, it makes perfect sense to me that there are people who are diabetic who end up 
not even needing insulin anymore when they switch their diet to a plant-based whole food natural diet. And I'm not a doctor, so I can't officially give advice to anyone medically. Talk to your doctor about this. But I, I have done research online and read books and there are many doctors with regular, you know, MD degrees, both naturopaths and allopathic mainstream doctors who say when their patients change their diet and eliminate most animal products and dairy products and eat a lot more fruits and vegetables and eliminate processed fake food that comes in a box that has preservatives and just fake stuff in it and too much salt and sugar and all kinds of weird ingredients. If you eat mostly fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds and some whole grains, I wouldn't advise eating wheat. I don't think wheat is good for me. Can't speak for everyone. I've reincorporated steel cut oats and some rice into my diet and that seems to be just fine. A lot of people when they go off animal products and they increase their fruit and vegetable intake and their whole grain intake, they tend to improve in terms of their blood sugar, in terms of their cholesterol, in terms of their blood pressure, etc. So whatever your health challenges are, as also, uh, okay, also mental health. My mental health improved when I went off of a lot of carbs, a lot of um, wheat carbs and processed foods. So if somebody has mood swings and emotional challenges, as well as having like diabetes or high blood pressure or high cholesterol, etc., or getting migraine headaches or, you know, all kinds of different issues can be improved if not eliminated. I mean, sometimes people are told that they have to be on insulin for the rest of their lives. And maybe some people do have to keep taking their insulin. But some people can cut way down and or not even need insulin anymore when they change their diet. And they tend to lose weight if they want to, you know, if somebody is overweight, and they would like to be more fit and trim because it's more physically comfortable for them. And easier to get around and do things easier on your heart and your lungs and your knees and your muscles and joints. Usually, if you switch your diet to a more plant-based, whole, natural food type diet, usually your health will improve in multitudes of ways. Also, people who have skin problems, who break out a lot, who have dry, patchy skin, what is it called, eczema, stuff like that. A lot of people can improve their health if they switch to a more whole food plant-based diet. And the opposite is true for cats and dogs. They actually need meat. So what I've done is I've eliminated all of the carbohydrates from my cat's diet and he gets special frozen raw meat that I get him at the health food pet store, which is specially formulated for all life stages for cats. And they have it for dogs as well. And it's mostly meat and it has organ meats like, um, lungs and liver and as well as the other kind of meat I don't know what you call it like thighs and ribs and you know all the different kinds of meat mixed with organ meat mixed with facillin husks and I think egg yolks or eggshells there's just different and then there's vitamins and minerals added to these um, foods that I feed my cat so I'm careful to feed him that I also feed him some raw meat that's made for humans uh, I have some meat in my freezer that I don't want to eat and it's fit for human consumption and I give him a little bit of that as a treat mixed with his special formulated food that I get at the health food pet store. Um, because if you just feed your cat or dog raw meat that's from your kitchen, they're not going to get the balance that they need. So if you go online, Google Dr. Karen Becker, you will see some really smart videos and she she talks about how to feed your cat or dog raw meat in the safe balanced nutritionally healthy way uh, if you cook meat for your dog or cat it gets rid of the live enzymes and some of the nutrition is gone and it's harder for them to digest a lot of humans are afraid of raw meat because there could be bad bacteria that could make us sick like if i ate raw meat it might make me sick but if I feed it to my cat, his digestive dogs and cats have digestive systems that are a lot more rugged than humans. And they actually do well eating raw meat. 
Also, if you freeze the raw meat for at least three days, it kills some of the bad bacteria. But what I'm saying is even some of the bad bacteria that's in raw meat is not dangerous for your dog or cat. It's dangerous for humans though. So I never, I never eat my, my cat's raw meat and I'm very careful the way I clean it up and I keep it his food separate from my food, especially now that I don't eat meat, I'm pretty much going vegan, but not really vegan as much as whole food plant-based eating, which means that I don't eat fake processed, like I don't eat vegan, you know, fake bacon or fake turkey or fake meat or fake dairy because that's processed. Uh, but that is one way to transition. If you want to become more of a vegetarian slash vegan, you can get fake like bacon made out of soy or whatever, but I don't do that. I just eat like fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds and some grains. I don't eat wheat, but I am incorporating steel cut oats as well as some rice into my diet, but mostly it's fruits and vegetables and beans for protein. And I eat some tofu. Some people say tofu is bad for you and soy is bad for you. I'm not sure. So I don't eat very much of that because I don't know, but I seem to be fine when I eat beans and that's a good source of protein. I also take a vitamin B12 supplement uh, because that's in, in meat and you know, vitamin B12 is in meat products. So I want to make sure I get enough vitamins and minerals in my diet. But if you eat a large array of fruits and vegetables and all the different colors of the rainbow, you generally will get the nutrition that you need, especially if you also eat nuts and seeds and beans and grains. Eat a huge variety of all of that stuff and talk to your doctor about it because I know I'm not a medical person, but this is just my own personal experience with myself, with me and my cat. I feed him raw meat and I feed myself mostly plant-based whole food diet. And as organic as I possibly can, I get good deals at Trader Joe's and Costco. I go to the food bank. I get artesian well water from uh, a natural spring that's near Seattle that's free. It's amazing. I'm so grateful. I have access to clean, healthy, untreated, safe water. Um... So these are some of my thoughts about nutrition and 9-11 and conspiracy theories and the man that ran into the fire at Burning Man. These are all of the things that have been on my mind lately. Instead of doing poetry and music on this episode, I guess I'm doing a huge monologue. So this is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring in Seattle. This is Hollow Earth Radio. This is podcast number, what is it, 48, I think. Thanks for tuning in. I've been doing this, gosh, for almost a year now. This is episode number 48. So that's 48 weeks of Goddess Kring podcasts. And I am going to take a deep breath. <sighs> Trust nature in jest, what you want to manifest. Relax out of the trap, rest inside the gap. Walking clockwise laps, lapping up the dance. Rolling dice of chains. Find a comfy spot, prop your back up, clear away the muck, gentle, sweet, smell, ginseng, plants, dwell, oxygen, herb, Nine six seven five one. Nine six seven five one. Nine six seven five one. Are you sure? Are you synthesizing? Tangled chaos. Endangered smashing. Smoky seas. Socialized English. National care. Every every session covered. Ethical you may never need. No longer hovering. 
Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kringen, Goddess Kringen, Goddess Kringen.